Good morning, Daniel Bridgen people. Good morning, Johannes. How are you? I'm okay, and you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm really excited because your presentation now, your webinar is the last one. So we had the string of uh, really successful webinars presenting uh, our new specific objectives. Uh, in case that uh, you missed any of them, or you would like to go through it again, you can find them uh, published on our um, website. Um, here is uh, uh, slide.com. Please um, write down uh, the passcode and also uh, all the details you have. So please, in case you have any question, uh, post them uh, through slide.com. Um, Johannes will today have um, a presentation on the better governance. There are a lot of uh, registered people, so quite some uh, interest in uh, in your specific objective. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody, also from my side. And let's see. We will now share the presentation. Should move now. Yes. This uh, seminar today is about the fourth priority, and uh, within it, that uh, specific objective 4.2 a better cooperation governance. Uh, some words on the general program setup. As we saw, a lot of uh, you which registered today have already attended uh, some um, other seminars, so I will keep the, the point rather short. You see here the program area. Um, here, uh, in terms of geography, we can add that uh, once Ukrainian partners uh, will be able to, uh, to, let's say, participate in our projects at all, the entire uh, area of Ukraine will be eligible. So in that regard, you have to uh, imagine also the, the entire area of Ukraine and not only those uh, two parts. And uh, well, uh, that area or Danube region area is characterized uh, by a lot of barriers. We have a lot of uh, countries. Um, it's highly fragmented in uh, with regard to the administrative uh, setup, economic and administrative aspects, social aspects. Uh, we have the highest number of countries among all transnational programs and the highest number of borders. And some experts counted out that if we take a 20 kilometer corridor uh, to each side of a border, then 44% of the entire uh, territory is covered by border regions. Uh, that's just a figure, but it indicates in how, how much it matters that cross-border and trans-border um, aspect uh, for our area. And I will come uh, later back to that point because it's um, it's directly connected to that specific objective uh, 4.2. Uh, it contains new member states, candidate countries, and neighborhood countries, and all in all, uh, it presents a unique um, historical chance to integrate further the Danube region, and uh, this is more true than ever one can say. Program budget, the entire budget is 213 million uh, euro EU contribution plus uh, 20% co-financing. The co-financing rate in the upcoming programming area is 20%, not 15% any longer. What is also new is that we have one single uh, pot created, basically. It's called Interreg Funds, which is bringing together the ARDF, EPA, and, and the key funds. Um, Furthermore, it can be said that approximately 50% of the budget will be allocated to the first call. This is uh, our aim. And the allocated budget to specific objective 4.2. No, I cannot see it. But it's 23, mm -hmm. 25 million. I cannot shift. Hmm. 
Just one second, I cannot move the slides at the moment. Okay. Can you up here maybe? Excuse me for that technical problem. So far, I could change the slides now. I cannot. Is working on it. Thank you, Nashi. We can go on. Here are the four problem priorities, just a rough overview. We have our first one dedicated to innovation, uh, second one uh, to um, environment and energy. The third one, a more social Danube region, is containing, of course, covering social aspects plus uh, e tourism and culture. And the fourth one, better cooperation governance. I uh, included that slide because uh, the um, general character of that fourth priority is um, rather, let's say, horizontal and not that much uh, thematic. So uh, when uh, you will come up with your uh, project ideas and you are interested in priority four, we might have, depending on the very proposal to discuss, uh, potential overlaps with other priorities, in particular, I'm thinking in priority three, uh, that will not contain uh, or uh, affect all uh, proposals, all ideas uh, of you, but in some occasions uh, it might be the case, and then we will clarify it uh, in a bilateral or trilateral with the affected colleagues from the other priorities. Now, um, here, a uh, slide on the priority four uh, I had to also include that one because priority four has a kind of special setup uh, as you saw we are talking about the specific objective 4.2 so what is the specific objective 4.2 the four uh, the 4.1 the 4.1 is dedicated to uh, the support of the USDR the EU strategy for the Daniel bridge uh, this specific objective 4.1 is uh, super specific, so to say, because it's uh, it not open for uh, all stakeholders. Uh, we have here only re restricted calls. It's meant to, to be a very, let's say, targeted support for the uh, actors of the uh, Danube strategy, namely the priority area coordinators, the Danube strategy point, and we might have a seed money or small project a facility which then may be open to all, also to you, uh, uh, funded within the 4.1, but the two main components, the priority area coordinator and the DSP, those are restricted calls. I uh, want to make uh, that point clear. We had very few, but in some cases uh, it uh, happened already in the previous reporting uh, uh, programming period that um, uh, applicants confused uh, that uh, setup. So we are talking here about the 4.2, which are standard projects. What is behind uh, the specific uh, objective 4.2? What are the challenges? I showed here to the left one map. I could show many more. This is the spatial distribution of net migration in the Daniel region. And here we see, of course, a huge uh, southeast, northwest uh, shift in terms of, of migration. Uh, leading to a lot of uh, effects, related effects like uh, depopulation of uh, urban of rural areas, uh, in areas with uh, a very old uh, population. Um, of course, it, uh, this has also consequences in terms of economic performance, in terms of uh, infrastructure, social service provision, and so on. Uh, in that uh, smaller square in the uh, left down corner, we, there's the comparison with the, uh, 2012. And uh, we see that uh, even only in those five years, the picture changed further within the Daniel region, but also within countries. 
and uh, a lot of similar maps could be shown, but uh, also here some bullet points to make it clear what are the key uh, challenges we want to address uh, within that specific objectives. Uh, this is first of all that we face huge discrepancies in terms of uh, territorial development across the Danube region. There uh, is a, a comparably low or very low institutional integration um, e e across borders compared to other uh, regions in, in Europe, uh, Northwest region or uh, uh, others. Uh, so this is a, a key feature of, of uh, our area that institutions across borders, uh, whatever whatever scope they have, um, don't interact sufficient uh, in terms of uh, shared problems. We have a very uh, distinct urban rural divide. Again, this we face also in uh, other corners of Europe, but here it's more distinct uh, in the Danube region. Uh, we have an insufficient local and uh, civic uh, participation in territorial development processes. Uh, and uh, a last and important uh, point is uh, the missing institutional capacity for developing, applying, adapting or implementing integrated territorial development policies. Further challenges are outlined in the Interreg program. They are also highlighted in the fact sheets. I stress that point because if you after that seminar or you already decided to develop a project application under that specific objective, then you are highly recommended uh, to, to start and to link your project proposal to the challenges behind it. It's really a, a success factor. So please have a look in the background documents we have published on, the, on our website. Here you can find more on the challenges we want to address. Now, what do we finance? What is the focus of the specific objective 4.2? The focus are integrated governance models for addressing challenges arising from demographic change, such as aging, depopulation, brain drain. Furthermore, we want to address integrated urban rural governance models, including specific territorial development schemes or strategies for rural and remote areas. We want to tackle support for more and stronger interinstitutional relations for the integrated development of transboundary functional areas. Uh, one of the focal points is capacity building, considering a better involvement of local and uh, in, uh, public bodies, uh, regional and public bodies, as well as civic actors in transnational policy making, territorial development frameworks, and governance models. And last but not least, support for the monitoring and analysis of territorial processes affecting the cohesion and cooperation of the Danube region. We have also some um, further aspects to be considered here, two horizontal elements. One is the provision of public services of general interest and the digitalization. And the other one are, and that's a very important point, all those frameworks which are already existing in the field of territorial, spatial or urban development. Uh, two, maybe the two most important ones uh, mentioned here, Territorial Agenda 2030 and the New Leipzig Charter. Next slide is dedicated to those two frameworks. Uh, but a, a last point here, uh, we really, I expect under this specific objective 4.2 integrated and holistic approaches, which does mean not only integration of different administrative levels, but also through embedding sectorial aspects, like for example, transport and ex or accessibility into a broader territorial governance scenario. Now, uh, the partnership uh, is let's say, difficult to describe since uh, one uh, a, a specific, a specific feature of the specific objective 4.2 is that uh, the, the uh, market of stakeholders basically is very intransparent. We don't have a distinct focus on uh, um, transport, on education or environment. So 
there are no uh, ministries on governance and so on. Uh, it depends very much uh, on on the let's say thematic angle uh, through which you approach that specific objective. But what we do expect is a critical mix, a good mix of uh, different uh, uh, project partners, which is clearly reflecting the integrated uh, or holistic character of the specific objective. Uh, we do definitely expect a strong local and civic ownership. Uh, ownership here means that those local and civic actors should not play a, only a side role in, in the projects, but they should play the, a main role. Uh, I think uh, those two points together, and this is also the experience already uh, under the, um, the old or still ongoing programming period in which we had a similar specific objective. So that, that makes the partnerships uh, of those governance uh, projects and with that the entire projects quite, uh, quite distinct and different to, to others uh, under the other three priorities. Um, the exact composition and, and size uh, is depend of partnerships uh, is is very much depending on on the topics you address and and the, the approach you have. But what can be said for sure is that uh, the partnership should have enough weight for leaving a footprint on transnational level and to have really a, a impact also on the policy level at transnational level. Um, I say this because uh, the, by regulation. Uh, the minimum uh, of partners is three, so uh, uh, this is, um, uh, we can say, maybe not enough. We also, by experience, we did not have projects with uh, three, four or five partners. Uh, in the partnership should definitely reflect the, uh, the transnational dimension we have here. What do we not finance under this specific objective? Uh, first of all, uh, projects which uh, do not demonstrate that uh, transnational cooperation is really needed to address the identified governance challenges. Uh, then projects which are not clearly embedded in a territorial scenario. So we want really to have uh, projects which show that they can achieve uh, place-based solutions. Um, we will not finance projects with a predominant focus on infrastructure or IT solutions, a predominant focus, uh, infrastructure and works is a budget line which is also available and, and eligible under 4.2. Uh, in, in web platforms, databases and so on are, are uh, very often a, a part of a project, so those elements are not bad in itself, but uh, the projects should not be uh, build around those elements. Um, furthermore, we don't uh, will fo um, fund projects lacking multi-level governance uh, with respect to the objectives, outputs, and especially the partnership composition. Uh, this point, by experience, I can tell you uh, the objectives and and outputs. Well, in 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 those. Um, skilled drafters uh, are able without bigger problems to uh, drop multi-level governance here and there and to make them look like uh, that would be the case but what we see very often is that uh, especially on the level of the partnership then it uh, this is not backed up basically because the partnership is a very uniform for example set up uh, by uh, um, five, six, seven research institutes, and then one municipality. So uh, we, will, we will scrutinize your project proposals uh, if they are consistent with regard uh, to the multi-level governance approach we want to have here. And that will uh, not only, but especially concern the partnership composition. Last point here, uh, a project with, with a clearly narrowed and focused sectorial focus, they uh, they most probably will, will uh, not be, let's say, fit into the 4.2. I put here in brackets one example. Uh, if uh, projects for example, are um, focusing on, on setting up educational or training schemes for uh, one certain target group, for example, for uh, young unemployed, then uh, those that 
type of project might fit better under priority three. But again, you have something in, in, in that field in mind. You think it fits better under 4.2, then please address us. We will discuss it. We will sit together also with the project officer from priority three, and we will find a solution. Um, yeah, and now uh, I think second last slide, a short look on those background frameworks I mentioned, Territorial Agenda uh, 2030 is, let's say, the spatial planning framework. Uh, we have here, I underlined Just Europe or Green Europe. Uh, then we have uh, the new Leipzig Charter, which is uh, more the uh, urban version of uh, a framework. Uh, again, here some buzzwords, the just city, the green city, digitalization. So uh, those are all elements which are anyway built in uh, into the 4.2. Uh, but I, I wanted to highlight those uh, two frameworks, which can be easily Googled to it, uh, go into them. There are also nice uh, summaries available on the web. And I tell you that because uh, it might also serve as a uh, source for inspiration and enrichment for your project proposals. Um, it, and uh, then uh, we see also the Danube region strategy. Uh, last and uh, very important uh, point here. Uh, again, uh, 4.2 might reach out to uh, different strands of the Danube region, the priority areas. Um, might be even in terms of urban planning, also transport aspects that be tackled and so on. So we cannot uh, point out one of the priority uh, of the Danube region. Uh, many might be affected uh, by what the priority areas uh, actually do. It's clearly the priority area 10, which let's say looks on paper the most relevant. And um, again, uh, you should feel free to also to uh, contact the, the, the colleagues from the uh, USDR to discuss your project proposal with, uh, with them. And we want uh, to uh, support with our projects also the Danube uh, uh, strategy. Uh, we clearly want to align all projects and that you have to prove also in your project application. Uh, we want to align the uh, projects uh, to the to the to uh, to the needs of the Danube uh, uh, strategy uh, by uh, topics and themes. This is already done, but the fine tune comes now in the drafting phase of your applications. Some last words on the first call for proposal. Um, we did not launch the call yet formally. There are some important uh, documents which are not formally approved yet. Uh, so we, we cannot formally launch the call. Uh, that's why just a rough outline on the, on the framework. We will have a two-step procedure. Uh, the info webinars, which they all of them also from my colleague had a thematic focus and not a, a technical one regarding the, the, the call itself. They took place. Today is the last one. Uh, we will very soon have some national info days. Uh, we plan to formally launch the call uh, in September. It will be the first step, of course. The submission of the first step is planned for late October. The launch of the second step is planned for spring 23. And the final approval uh, should be done before the closing of the next year in 23. So here are my contact details. Uh, again, feel free to contact me, to contact my uh, colleagues. We are um, prepared for discussing now your project ideas. Um, please also don't forget that uh, we have uh, national contact points in uh, each of the uh, participating countries of the uh, tenure program, tenure bridging program, uh, and uh, please also turn to to them, and of course follow our website uh, with regard to news about the formal launch of the call. 
Um, that's from my side now uh, regarding that specific objective. And we saw already on the uh, registration that uh, you have questions, of course, and now comes the question and answer round. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Hannes. Thank you very much. It was uh, precise and concrete and wide scope of topics within uh, the specific objective and many things to, to, to be done right. But once uh, done, it will be rewarding for the society as a whole. So, so let's hope that um, the new proposals will bring in some uh, nice ideas. So let's hope that the territory is going in the right direction. Uh, so now we will go to the um, questions. We received the through slide.com. So may we ask for the questions in case we received any, or it was so clear that uh, the audience got it right? Can be. Yeah. So do we have any questions? Okay, so um, there is one comment. Why don't I hear you? I hope that by now you heard us, right? If, well, if, well, then if it's not, late. then it's too late, but you can always uh, go through this uh, presentation um, on our website. It will be uploaded. Uh, the recording. So, um, uh, if not, then please um, uh, try it on on the website. Um, okay, we have one good morning from Bucharest. Good morning from Budapest. What would be the objective of a possible seed money fund? Um, the objective of uh, such a facility is to uh, to create, uh, let's say. Uh, low hurdle projects to allow also uh, newcomers, less experienced partners uh, to develop project ideas. Uh, the exact uh, scope uh, uh, will be discussed. So we we are just starting to discuss that uh, that facility. Uh, a further point is that as you saw it. Uh, it's placed under 4.1, so the uh, support to the tenant strategy. So this will be um, a scheme uh, which will be, again, very closely, uh, not only aligned to the needs of the strategy, but uh, will be developed together with the actors and representatives of the, of the strategy. More can not be said at the time being, unfortunately. Thank you. When will the call um, calls open? But uh, this is something that um, you just uh, uh, gave the answer. Um, good morning. When you mention a strong focus on local and civic ownership, do you mean local public administration and interest groups such as civic NGOs? Yes. Okay, that's it. Um, regional as well, so it's not, let's say, also the um, uh, administrative systems are different in each country, but uh, we, we mean sub-national level and we mean in particular, I would say, local public administration, but uh, as we talk about multi-level governance, uh, it comprises also the regional level, not to forget. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What are the key figures of co-funding and expected amount of project funds? Project funds you, per project I, amounts. I understand it like yeah. this that we cannot be, there's no figure, let's say, uh, ideal figure we, we have in mind. It depends uh, on the topic, it depends on the, uh, uh, the, the size of the partnership very strongly, uh, of course. Um, we have projects from uh, 800,000, let's say, to over 5 million we had mm -hmm. in the Southeast. So, um, this has to be, this has to be um, not discussed. This comes basically out of your project, also the activities you want to do. Uh, if you have equipment components, uh, justify it. If you have infrastructure components, which is justified and, and, and so on. So you come up with, you will create the, the, the budget will be a result of uh, the, your project and what you want to do and who, want, who, who is in your partnership. 
and uh, feedback can also be given in the drafting phase from uh, the JS on that. Thank you. And also co-funding, you mentioned it in your presentation, just to say that it's 80% uh, of uh, EU contribution and 20%, yes. uh, but this is something that you already included in uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in presentation. Good morning, May. Um, Viv, uh, can you please help me how to pronounce? I try Lviv region. Thank you. Region, take part in this program. Uh, not. Yet, since um, on our last um, e monitoring meeting we had, uh, task force meeting, uh, which is the decision taking body of the program, it was decided that um, uh, Ukrainian partners in that first call, as it stands now, uh, will not be able to uh, participate in projects for the reason of martial law. Uh, so, uh, it was understood and uh, the decision was taken in consensus, uh, meaning uh, also um, with the consensus of the Ukrainian delegation that uh, the, um, the situation at the moment will not allow partners uh, to uh, travel, for example, sufficiently and, and, and so on. So, under the current situation, which might look different in uh, two months, uh, the partners will not from Ukraine will not be able to uh, to to participate in the first call. Uh, unfortunately, uh, respective uh, funds will be uh, saved, however, for later participation of Ukrainian partners. Uh, yeah, uh, but otherwise, uh, your region, uh, although it is uh, by the map I shown outside the eligible area. Now, due to the new approach we have, it will be also uh, eligible. It will be eligible area. So please um, yeah, uh, follow further developments on our website. Thank you. Is there a maximum number of partners? What is your experience? Which is the maximum size of the partnership? Is it a benefit to involve many countries? Um, we are the Danube region program, as I said, if you present here a project, then, uh, we, we suppose that you do it on, on purpose and you check out other possibilities such as cross border programs. Uh, so you want uh, to achieve a transnational impact and for, for those, you have to have a certain coverage of, of the program area. We did not have, I think. One project in the last 10 or 12 years, which did cover by fin financing partners all countries. That no, no, th this is no, yes, no, I think that we did not. I think so that no, so this is this is uh, uh, not not uh, the uh, let's say uh, aim. Uh, you should have a partnership which um, is, is, is heavy enough to really to have an impact in the entire area. Uh, one thing here to add is that it's, uh, we have also to distinguish between uh, financing partners with own uh, budget and associated strategic partners. So very often uh, the core partnership built up by financing partners, let's say as a medium size, about, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 partners, but those projects are enriched by associated strategic partners. Uh, that's a light partnership. Those partners don't have their own budget. It's also easier for them to, let's say, in terms of um, administrative burden to, uh, to, to join a partnership. And through that, uh, in, uh, through that uh, associated strategic partners, which very often are um, ministries, for example, or high-level decision-taking bodies, policy-making bodies, uh, one can reach uh, um, uh, further, let's say, coverage of the area and achieve um, a, a better um, outreach of the, of the project. So all those, all those uh, elements have to be considered. Uh, last but not least, there, there might be not so much under that 4.2 governance, but but still a, a topic sometimes is uh, limiting also 
uh, the, uh, the, the the area by itself. I, I think, for example, in uh, one project we had in culture back in Southeast, it was the Danube Limes brand. It uh, dealt with uh, preparing the upper Danube Limes for uh, UNESCO World Heritage. It happened, by the way, it's mm -hmm. a success story because they prepared that uh, that step um, with uh, our program, and then I, they applied and they succeeded. But what I want to say is uh, here the topic limited the the uh, not the number of partners, but it limited the the, the uh, area, let's say, uh, to a certain extent. Uh, Bosnia or Albania was uh, not covered by the Upper Danube Limes. So in 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 that regard, also. Let's say the, the topic of what you want to do uh, it can have a kind of influence on that uh, on that decision. Yeah, and uh, if you want to check um, uh, the partnerships, then please check also on our website approved projects and just for some inspiration and to understand. So, yes, there is no maximum number of partners. And please check the, the website uh, and the approved uh, projects. So it seems that uh, we have no more questions. Okay, so it seems that um, that you answered to all of them. Good. Right? Yes, so. are participants also allowed to raise their voice if some Mm -hmm. Yes, so please feel free to take the opportunity. So it seems that um, we may close this um, successful session. So Good. thank you, Johannes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Thanks to um, the audience. And uh, looking forward uh, to seeing you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.